Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. This is our virtual setting. Uh, we are in a hybrid right now situation where we are in person and virtual. So we thank you for showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared that's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to Spirit of Our Fellowship. And so listen, we have been dealing with the remedy, the remedy, our series, and dealing with the healing power of God, Christ the healing, Jesus being our healer, and that you can walk in healing in any area of your life, not just physically, but also emotionally. Um, it could be psychologically. It can be in relations. God wants you healed and he wants you whole. And so now as we start diving into this, I want to focus in on a certain aspect today. And so but before I do that, I want to welcome all of our first timers. Maybe this is your first time tuning in. You're just peeking in to see what this is about. Listen, I want everybody now to click your shares on your social media platforms. Share this right now. Invite somebody to come into church. It may be somebody that you know that's been dealing with something that they need to be healed of. I don't care if it's dealing with grief. I don't care if it's dealing with sickness or disease. I don't care if it's dealing with mental illness, whatever it is that they need to be set free and delivered from and healed of, have them tune in today. For those that maybe you's like, okay, I'm good. I've been free. I've been delivered. I've been healed. Okay, now you can learn how to minister healing to somebody else as well today. So I want you to be ready for this. I want you to go ahead and get your pen and your pads ready. I want you to open up your heart and be ready to receive the rhema word of God, that spoken word that God is speaking directly to you while I'm even preaching. Everybody can hear the same message, but everybody may not hear the same thing that God is instructing you to do. Be ready to hear from God today. There will be answers that will be released. There will be things that's going to cause strength to come to your body. It's going to cause strength to come to your faith. I believe that you're going to start believing God more. Your hope will be restored. Your faith will be ignited. God is going to do something in your life today. And I believe he's going to transform and he's going to change things around for your benefit and for your good. All right. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Um, I want to go ahead and pray. And um, I'll share some other things later after the message. But let's let's pray. Father, we thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. I pray that every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you. Father, not only inform us, but transform us today. We thank you for revelation and insight. We thank you for things that we have not seen before we'll begin to see. Feed your sheep today. Help me to feed your sheep. And Father, that you use my lips and my tongue to document on the hearts of your people, to deposit faith in their spirit to help them to renew their minds. That Father, we thank you that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. We're not just having church to have church. We're, Father, we are excited about what you're doing. We are serious about what you want to do through us and in us, and that you want to do great exploits. Glory to God. And I thank you so much for it. And Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for knowledge and understanding that the spirit of might is even upon me that the spirit of might comes upon your people and we give you glory for it now that we think broader and bigger, expand our territory, expand our reach. We call in the nations. We speak to nations now in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory and we give you praise and we give you honor for it now. For you are a good God and there is none like unto you. You are possessor of heaven and earth. And we magnify your name. We bless your name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Expand, expand, expand. It's your job for us to expand and to grow. We call in the laborers right now. We, Father, we send forth laborers in the earth. 
We bring them in. We raise them up. We send them out. Father, we thank you that men and women who are coming from the north, the south, and the east, and the west to sit at your feet and to hear the word of the Lord, to be trained and developed in the things of God, to do great exploits in the earth. We thank you for your power that's present. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, whew. you know, sometimes you get to praying and you start seeing stuff while you pray. And a lot of times while I'm praying, the Holy Spirit is revealing things to me to speak out of my mouth. But I see the image of it. I see the picture of it in my head or I see it with the eyes of my understanding, the eyes of my heart. And I just get the image of it in my head and I just start seeing. And one of the things was be ready for expansion, be ready for growth, expect it. Uh, believe for it. Believe God to stretch you to who you are supposed to be in him, to the full capacity. And remember, I'll, I'll just share this. God wants to use everything that's in you for his glory. Don't ever forget that. Every gift, every talent, every ability, let him use it for his glory. All right. Now, I want y'all um, to go with me. We're going to start here. We're going to start in the book of Philippians chapter four, verse six. And as I begin to deal with the remedy and, and understanding that it is the will of God for his children to walk in divine health and healing. Um, one of the things is we start talking about things that will cause this healing power to go into operation, but also things that are hinder healing from manifesting. And one of the greatest things that will cause healing not to manifest in our physical bodies where divine healing, when I say divine healing, I'm talking about supernatural healing, is doubt and unbelief. See, that unbelief, believing that God, or you don't believe that God can do it. And it's almost like when you, when you walk in unbelief, it's almost a sense of hopelessness where you don't think anything can change this thing. And so that you're just stuck in this situation. But God is saying, I got a cure for your stuck today. I got a cure right now and a remedy, and I'm going to pump some life into those that may feel as though that, you know what, there is no hope. And I'm going to tell you this, the devil is a liar. With long life, God going to satisfy you and show you his salvation. Sometimes you've been, you've been I, I just, I'm hearing this word grief. And grief is attached to loss. And when you are grieving, it's almost a feeling of despair. It's a feeling of the spirit of depression can set in. And I declare in the name of Jesus that that depression comes off of anybody that you've been struggling with. it. And I come against that right now. And I declare that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Because now watch this. That thing need to come off of you now so you can begin to hear what God wants you to have and what he wants you to receive today. Whoever this is for, I just, I just, I just sense that thing. That right now we come against the spirit of depression right now. And that your laughter and your joy is coming back right now. Supernatural joy. Supernatural laughter. You'll find yourself laughing at stuff and it don't even seem funny. That all of a sudden that there's going to be a spring in your step. I speak life to you now. That you're going to have a better outlook on life. That you're going to see opportunities where you didn't see them before. Your eyes are about to be open now. The eyes of your understanding are going to be open to see the opportunities that are right in front of you right now. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Now I need you to receive that. Glory, yeah, we coming off. I know we're going to hit something today. I already sense it. But God has said, I, I need to sow this word into you. I want to sow this word into you today. Now watch this. Well, I want to deal with the area of praise and thanksgiving first. And I talked about it a little bit a couple of weeks ago, but I want to kind of dive a little bit more in it. That praise and thanksgiving will help to release the power of God to heal, set free, and to deliver. It will, listen, it'll open up the door to heal, set free, and to deliver. And this is a word that I've been hearing in my spirit. I believe that you're about to hit the reset. God is like, I'm going to hit the reset button for many of you. Your body's about to be reset. Your mind's about to be reset. Your situation's about to be reset. But you got to be open for it. There is a clean slate coming. And there's going to be a forgiveness of things. 
I believe, man, where does it come from? I, there's going to be a forgiveness of debts for some of you that's caused stress in your life that there are going to be people that's going to say paid for. They're going to pull up. You're going to call and they're going to pull up the documents. They're going to pull up your account and there's going to be zero balances on some of y'all's account. This, this is just what God is telling. I'm just hearing this right now. In the name of Jesus, some of you here lay it on people's hearts to say, you know what? It's, it's paid for. It's canceled. You paid enough. I just feel as though I'm supposed to just go ahead and deliver you of this debt right now in Jesus' name. So I want you to be ready for that. And it'll bring a weight off of you. And all of a sudden that'll begin because that stress is coming off of your body. Now your body's going to start resting better. It's going to start healing itself properly again because the stress is not attacking it. And you've been so stressed out about stuff. God says, you got to cast your care on me because I care for you. You got to have a, a carefree attitude. You got to have a carefree. I'm not saying be irresponsible, not to handle your business, not to do the things you need to do. But listen, listen, let, let, listen, let tomorrow handle itself. Listen, tomorrow got his own things that got, you got to be concerned about. Understand how to rejoice today, how to enjoy life today and say, you know what? Listen, it's something that's called willful neglect. When you say, you know what, I'll deal with it tomorrow. It'll still be there. So let me go ahead and enjoy it right now. Let me relax. Let me get myself together. Let me rest. Let me rest my mind, rest my body, because now I need to be strong to handle this next leg of what it is I'm getting ready to encounter and getting ready to do for God. And so now God is saying this, I need you to be full of joy. I need you to be full of peace. Now watch this. Let's go to Philippians. Philippians 4, 6 through 8 says it like this. He says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, in everything, but in everything. He didn't say for everything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God. Now, let me go back here. He says, don't be careful. That word careful is translated anxious. Don't be anxious. Don't be impatient. See, sometimes because things have taken so long to happen, there is a level and a sense of being impatient, which will cause you to bypass certain processes that God wants you to go through in order to handle the harvest he's getting ready to bring into your life. And so I want you because I listen, I understand how that is, because now we get excited about acceleration. But understand, too, God will not bypass certain processes you have to go through because he still said faithful over the little, then ruler over much. But then now he's saying this, begin to lock in to be faithful where you are so that I can accelerate you to much. But watch this. He says, but let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding will watch this show. Keep your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus, the peace of God, the wholeness of God, the shalom of God. In other words, peace, that calmness is a tranquility and a peaceful, a calm state of mind while you're dealing with a situation. There's going to be a peace that's going to pass your understanding. In other words, you don't even understand why you so peaceful at what you what you're going through. In the past, you used to freak out. You used to spaz out about stuff. But there's a peace now that's hit your life and that's going to hit your life for some of you. Some of you are already walking in it. Whereas at first, when you were younger in the Lord or a time, it could have been a year or two ago. You would have freaked out of what you're currently going through. But now God is saying, I'm strengthening you and I'm growing you. And sometimes what happens is we are praying about the situation to change versus saying, OK, God, change me in the midst of this thing. And so now that that way I'm stronger in you. Listen, there are some things in order to get to where God is calling you to go, that there's a certain rite of passage that you got to go through. There are certain things you're going to have to overcome because this part of your testimony and it's part of your rite of passage. In other words, God is saying this, I'm going to show myself as a deliverer to you and I'm going to take you as a deliverer to others. And you need to be ready for that now, because now you're going to come and tell them what God has done for you and how he brought you out. And now he's saying this. You might as well go ahead and rejoice now, because just the fact that you're going through it is showing that you're getting ready to come out of it. You better go ahead and get ready to come on out of it and to say, watch this. I trust God and I believe God. 
And so I declare peace to come upon my mind. I declare peace to come upon my body. I declare in Jesus' name for my body to, to, to release the right chemicals, to release the endorphins, to release the things that relax my body. What I don't have to get um, sleeping pills to sleep any longer or the muscle relaxes. No, everything going to be relaxed in Jesus name. And I declare in Jesus, see, I'm doing this calm on purpose. I'm doing this intentional. I'm being very intentional because God wants you to see that. He says this, my word is going to cause medicine. It's going to be medicine to your body. It's going to be health to your flesh. It's going to bring peace to your mind. You're going to see the potency and the power of my word in these last days like you've never seen it before. you got to trust my word. Some of you have prayed and you've been praying, but you haven't been in my word. Because you haven't been in my word, listen, you don't even know if you're praying right. If you're not in the word of God, and this is why we got to teach you these things. We got to teach line upon line and precept upon precept. Watch this. And he says in verse seven, in the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. It shall keep your heart and keep your mind. The Bible says out of the heart flows the issues of life. Some of you have been walking in unforgiveness, but that peace will cause you to be able to forgive because you ain't stressed out about what happened to you or what somebody did to you or what they took from you or how they treated you and how they was backbiting and they was gossiping about you. At your lowest point, they talked about you. But God is saying this, you need to let that go. You need to release it right now. Whoever this is for right now, you need to release it. You need to let it go so I can do what I've been wanting to do with you the whole time. And you've been saying, I don't know how to forgive, God. I just can't forgive. Yes, you can. If the Lord Jesus Christ, if you made Jesus the Lord of your life, he says, I released my love and deposited my love in your heart and shared this, this love in your heart by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit has already deposited this supernatural love on the inside of you for you to be able to forgive. But now you got to make a decision to forgive. I choose to forgive you. I choose not to hold against you what you did to me. I choose not to allow it to eat me alive and me to keep dwelling on it over and over again. And what you're going to have to do is whenever that thought comes up about what somebody did to you, you're going to have to open up your mouth, capture that thought and say, in the name of Jesus, I am choosing to let that go. I choose to forgive them in Jesus name. Now, the Bible doesn't command you to trust him, but he does command us to forgive and to say, you know what? I'm going to say, watch this. I'm going to have this level of peace. And, and, and listen, even if I can be as amicable as I can be, I want to be as loving as I can be. And I'm going to start praying for you. If you start praying for people, what begins to happen is God starts changing your heart towards that person. And so he said, why am I talking about this when we're talking about healing? Because this is a thing that can block up stuff from working because you hold in such just it's like it's, it's almost like a bitterness. It's, it's a bitterness that's, that's, that's in you that it's like, man, this thing is like the very thought inside of this person or people. It just man, it's like you are so uncomfortable. It's like they have a hold on you. It's a hold on you that God says you need to let that go. And watch this. He says, I'm saying this, I'm going to say this. It's going to come off of you, but your response, you, you got to be willing to say, okay, God, I choose to forgive and the supernatural is going to kick in to assist you. The minute you choose to forgive, see, you've been waiting to feel different before you say, I forgive. Uh-uh. He says, choose to forgive and it's going to change how you feel. Choose to forgive. Choose to forgive. And it'll start changing how you feel. And it'll start, it'll start changing how you treat them. And they'll be wondering, and watch this, you're not going to give them ammunition to come back at you anymore. Oh, that this is for somebody. I'm being very detailed. Somebody needs to hear this. Once you start treating them better, it forces, it's almost like you're in this circle of love. Once you come out the circle, you're not protected. You come back in the circle of love, it forces God to move on your behalf. It forces stuff to start changing around you because you made a decision. Now, watch this. Even if that person didn't change, you change it. And you're growing stronger and stronger. And it'll come to a point. One or two things usually happens. 
either it begins to affect that individual and they start treating you different, or they begin to remove themselves from your presence. Either way, you're not agitated any longer. It's usually one of two things that usually happens. And I'm telling you this, make a decision now. Make a decision to change. Make a decision to love. And some of you need to go back. Listen, even after this message, go back over this over and over again. Listen, and then get into the scripture that declares and decrees, the love of God abides in my heart. Love is patient. It's kind. It's not rude. It doesn't behave itself unmannerly. It's not, it's not, oh uh, yeah, it's not rude or unmannerly. It takes no account of a suffered wrong. Listen, it takes no account of a suffered wrong. That, that's sometimes, that's a hard thing to do. I'm being honest. To not take an account when somebody does you wrong. But what we normally do is, okay, let me put a check right there. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm hold that against them. I'm going to keep it in me. I'm going to keep it in my, the compartment of my mind so if something else happens. Now, I'm not talking about not being aware, not being, you know, just being aware of your surroundings and aware of how, you know, people's character are and dealing with people. But I'm talking about holding it that no matter what, you it's like whenever you see them, God can't even talk to you about them because of how you're thinking. Then he says this, finally, brethren, he said, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Well, in the God of peace, he going to come on you. He said, Let me, let's go back through this. He says, brother, whatsoever things are true. What's the number one truth you need to rely on? God's word. Number one, let's see what God says about this thing. You know the truth of the matter. You know the truth of the matter. And when God's word begins to become the forefront of your thinking, okay, God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Listen, it might be formed, but it'll never prosper against me. So now I can't, I don't even have to defend myself any longer to the accusations of people against me. There might be pockets of people that have been talking about you. But when this is all said and done, listen, they still talking about the old you and don't even realize that God has been transforming you the whole time. And, and so they still see you through the old lens of the hurt or the rejection or the pain of their last encounter with you, not realizing that God has already changed you. You've already repented of that thing. You've already changed your mind about it because it might have been true. I'm talking about the stuff that was true. That, yeah, you did it. <laughs> I know sometimes we talk about the lies people tell, but what about if it's true? That, yeah, I was like that. I did make that mistake, but I've already repented before God. And just because you didn't accept my apology about it, you didn't accept the change that's taking place because hurt people still want to hurt people. And people who feel victimized always want to keep that victim's mentality and say, wait a minute, it's about me because it's self-centeredness. And you're going to have to say, you know what? I've already done that. So you go do what you want to do. And you can tell as many people as you want to. But when it comes down to it, my character and my integrity is going to shine through and God is going to bring, he's going to bring vindication for me. And he says, this thing will not prosper against me. So you ain't got to keep going back. You ain't got to keep going into comment sections. You ain't got to keep responding to stuff that people are saying. Go ahead and cut it off. See, that's holding you captive. You are giving them too much attention and it is holding you captive. Who in the world am I talking to right now? You, you, this thing, and you keep, and you sneaking into their, their social media accounts and you looking to see what they doing and looking to see who they like and looking to see who they with and they going on with their life and you still stuck. God said, come out of stuck now. If you come out of it, I'll give you something greater than what you felt like you lost. But you got to be at peace with you. You got to be at peace with them. The Bible says be at peace with all men wherein it's possible. And so now if that relationship can't be restored with them because of their rejection of your willingness to try to bring restoration, God is saying you are not under bondage. You are not held in bondage. Don't you hold on to it for one split second. You move on. Listen, if that friendship is over, he said, I'll give you new friends. I'll give you new friends who will support you, who will root for you, who will be there for you in those times. But Lord, I've been there for everybody else. And ain't nobody there for me. Stop. Get out your pity party. And God is saying, come out of it. Who am I talking to? right, <laughs> Lord, you got to just, just come on out. Just come on out. He says this. I like this. 
Whatsoever things are honest. Honest. This is interesting. What's the honest way to do it? What's the, what's, what's, I, I think integrity. I think what's, what's, as I think these thoughts, I begin to act in these ways. It's like, what's, what's the right thing to do? What's the thing? Um, I, you got to stop and, and, and begin to translate and meditate this. What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are honest? What sort of the things are true? What's the truth about this thing? What's the honest report? What's the right thing? You know, what things are just? What things are, are, are right? Whatever is pure. Purity in thought. If you have purity in thought, you have purity in action. If you have honesty and integrity in thought, you have honesty and integrity in action. This is why peace can come and wholeness can come because you know Satan has nothing on you and you know that you're doing what's right because it's right and doing it right. And God, I'm doing it to the best of my knowledge and understanding. And so God, if I need more understanding in this area, Holy Spirit, I ask that you reveal unto me something that I might be missing. And do I have a blind spot somewhere? And if you don't show it to me now, I, I will be safe to see according to your word. I've made a decision to think right about this thing. I made a decision to have purity and thought. Don't you know how stuff begins to happen? It happens in our lives. It first happens with a thought. A man or a woman doesn't just go commit commit adultery on their spouse. They thought about it first. It was nurtured and incubated. And then the opportunity showed up and they acted out on it. Whatever it is you have done is based off of how you have thought before it ever happened. Listen, this is how the system works. And he says, if you want to see peace in your life, you got to start having some peace in your mind and you got to start controlling how you think so that this peace can come. And now when you walk in peace, you're going to sleep better. If you sleep better, your body's going to have a chance to restore itself while you're sleeping. It's going to affect everything. As you sleep better, you're going to start thinking better. You're going to be more productive because you ain't going to no longer have brain fog. And now you're constantly concentration will be there. And now you can get some stuff done because now you haven't been able to get it done because of lack of focus, which came from lack of sleep because you had lack of peace because you allowed that stuff to keep running through your mind the whole time and you never controlled it. But you never understood that your advancement was now tied to the level of peace that you have because you never knew how to tie it all together. And this is why God is saying, I'm preaching better than some of you might be shouting and it might be hitting you right now. That's why. That's why it's all tied together. God is saying, I'm not just talking about healing in one area. I'm talking about peace or wholeness where it starts affecting everything that you do. So now we got to stick with it. Ooh, this is good. This is good. Now watch this. <laughs> I like that. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are good report. Don't you know it's easier to catch something in the incubation stage or the seed form than it is after it's been developed? Catch it quick when it first hits. It's easier to kill it then. By the time you you done position yourself in the room with somebody, it's about too late then. Because you done already set yourself up. You've already been incubating. You've already been developing this, this appetite in this area. So God is saying it's time to kill stuff in the seed form. It's time to go ahead and start change. Why do we keep coming back to this? It comes so back to this that we got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We got to flush out. We got to flush out stuff. It's like now, it's like cleansing your palate again. God's saying cleansing your thinking through my word. Understand that whom the son has set free is free indeed. Understand that by his stripes, the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. You were healed. And so now in Jesus name, as I meditate on that, as I sit and think on that, I'll start speaking to the thing that's been violating what the word of God is saying. This pain, this situation, you are violating the word of God. And listen, this is what I heard while I was um, praying the other day. Last night, I think I was meditating on this. And all of a sudden it was like people, <sighs> I, oh, I'm trying to say it in a way that is not offensive but you got to hear the, the impact of what I'm saying. It does not matter what has happened to other people in their journey of believing for healing. God is still a healer. And he is all, Jesus has already healed and provided healing. 
We don't know everything that's going on in somebody else's faith journey. We don't know what's been said. We don't know what's really been believed. We don't understand the whole thing, but we understand what God's word says. This is why let God be true in every man a lie. So God's word says by his stripes, I'm healed. So I declare I'm healed in Jesus name. And I, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, I declare that every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria and infirmity that tries to touch my body, it dies instantly. But now all of a sudden my eyes are open to see anything that I may have been doing that's been violating or that's been contradictory to what I'm believing for. Now, Holy Spirit, bring it to me. Yeah, remember. Remember how you was acting? Remember you just shoved this in your mouth? Remember how you said and ate all that sugar? Remember how you did this? Okay, it's coming in contradiction to what you're believing for. And so now what we think is our faith is going to override our bad habits. And God is saying, listen, I begin, I thought I was going to preach another message today and I, I might be preparing. It might've just been for me. I don't know, but it, it, it's dealing with discipline. No, I can share this part. Discipline for breakthrough. And that's what I heard. And I just started writing out stuff. Discipline for breakthrough. Whatever it is, there is going to be consistent, consistent, constant application. I heard this statement years ago. It's consistency that brings the breakthrough. It's a constancy. It's you being the same. It's a regimented, no stop, every day doing this thing, just like a steady stream of water can, it can create a hole in a rock. In this, if it's just dropping, a steady drop, if it's consistent over a period of time, it can wear out a rock. You would think something like liquid couldn't do that. No, but concentrated, it can break through. So just imagine your consistency that says, by his stripes, I'm healed. Your consistency that says, I walk in this peace that passes all understanding. It guards my heart and my mind through and by Christ Jesus. The consistency that says, I will see people as you see them, God. So create in me. So create new eyes in me. Give me new lenses, new eyes to see people through right now. Help me with this thing, God. I had to cry out to God for that myself. Lord, help me in this area. Help me to see people like you see them. Help me to understand what they're going through because right now I might be treating them one way because I don't know their story. And just because their story is different from mine, we always think people got to be just like us, but we don't know their story. Lord, help me. Help us to be compassionate. Help us to walk in mercy. Help us to encourage when they need encouraging. Help us to hug them when we need a hug. Then they need a hug. But help us to kick them in their tail if they need to. Come on, get yourself together and rise up strong in your authority and in your faith. Whatever it is, God is going to open up your eyes to start giving you very pinpoint and detailed accuracy at things that you need to begin to create, things you need to begin to change, things you need to begin to do. This is why the consistency of your confession will open up the eyes of your understanding. Glory to God. And you'll begin to see stuff. Why are you speaking it? Your eyes will be open in the supernatural. God will show you stuff. See, this is where I begin to go into the spirit many times as I start doing the natural, consistent things, praying in the Holy Ghost, speaking life. And in the midst of me speaking, the answer, the enlightenment shows up. Oh, Lord, the entrance of my word giveth light, God says. The entrance of my word giveth light. There's going to be an illumination that's coming to your spirit right now that you ain't going to be hitting and missing no longer. There's going to be pinpoint accuracy for many things that you've been believing for. And so, because right now it's like, ain't no more time to be wasted. Ain't no more money or energy to be wasted. God, I need this thing now. I got to hit the bullseye right now because too much is at stake right now. Who? Who, Lord? Glory to God. Mm. He says, whatsoever things are of a good report. What's if things are lovely? Think of something lovely. What's lovely to you? Think of some nice flowers. You could be running through a meadow. I don't care for some of y'all. I don't care. Whatever it is. What's lovely? What's lovely? Think on it. Think good thoughts. The world ain't, listen, the world ain't come up with that stuff. New age and all that. Man, good, listen, God, all this stuff in the book. Think on something good. Think on something good. Think intentionally on something good. Think yourself happy. Glory to God. I walk in joy and I walk in peace. I, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to fret. I refuse to have any anxiety. 
I refuse to be anxious. I walk in patience and I let patience have her perfect peace that I be complete and entire wanting nothing because if, Oh Lord, that's good. If I'm walking in peace and I'm walking in patience and I'm being consistent in the thing, nothing will be left undone. Sometimes when you're trying to rush to get stuff done, you will miss something in the process. He says the part of your patience will allow you to see stuff that you didn't see before because you're settling your spirit and your mind down now. And now you're going to begin to hear things as you just quiet yourself down, get into my presence, and I'll start illuminating stuff to you. I'll start showing you stuff about you. I'll start showing you stuff about your family and friends, things I need you to pray for, things I need you to pinpoint about. I've been there when I've been praying and I knew that, okay, God, God, Holy Spirit, show me what I need to pray for, for this one, for that one. And then there are times where one I might pray for a little bit longer. And one is like only a couple of things. He said, that's all that you need to talk about right now. And he begins to direct and instruct and say, just speak this. All they need is this from you right now. Sometimes just you showing up in your presence. Don't say nothing. Just show up right now because I'm working on something. God will give you supernatural wisdom. God is going to instruct you. And I'm telling you now, you better receive this. He's going to instruct you with things and he's going to show you things to come. He's going to give you such, I'm talking about such wisdom. Y'all about to walk in a level of wisdom and it is going to be a crown. It's like a cloak of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is going to come upon you for you to know how to do things. It's going to be like, You've looked at stuff. When the spirit of wisdom is upon you, it'll cause you to look at the thing you've been looking at for years and see something totally different this time. And all of a sudden, he'll say you've had all the materials that you've ever needed. Listen, 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 Linda, listen. I'm telling you, listen. Even if Abraham could have created an airplane. Hear me. The materials that were needed to create the airplane were already in the earth. Isaac could have created penicillin. Because everything that was needed was already here. The issue is not the resources, but your vision. What do you see to take what you have and to do more with it? God is saying everything that, that you need that pertains to life and godliness has been granted unto you. The Zoe life is yours. The good life is yours. Health and strength are yours. It's already, listen, the herbs are already here in the earth. Things are already here. But people see perversion comes in when it takes what already is and now turns it to an abnormal use of it and not God's original design. The same herbs, see, I'm okay, I'm about to go somewhere. The same herbs that cause people to smoke and get high are the same herbs that have been planted here, but now those same qualities, those same, what's the word? Um, not the chemicals, faculties, whatever thing that's in that plant to now bring health to your body is still legitimate in God's eyes. But the reason you got a problem with it is because there's been illegitimate use of it. And whenever something, see, that's abuse, abnormal use of it. So even though, see, and this is why some people, especially in church, we're so limited in our thinking with stuff is because it's been so perverted by the world that we got to now start seeing it through the lens of God and the wisdom of God and say, God, how do you want me to take what you've already planted, giving me dominion over it and say, now it's time for you to produce what you need to produce in the earth. And don't say I said something I didn't say. All I'm saying is whatever we have is already here. All the money is already here. How am I going to help? I'm going to How I get over it? Is whatever, whatever, whatever you need is already here. You're taking medicine for something that there's a natural remedy that's already here. That you can completely come off that medication now. Now. It's already here. But it's easier to just go to the doctor because that's what you always done. I'm not against doctors. None of that. I believe I believe in doctors. I believe God uses them. But they don't know everything. They're still practicing medicine. And you put all your trust in it. 
and never even considered challenging what's been said to you. So they shoving stuff in you. Listen, I've seen this more than ever. Like when my wife has gone through her health challenges and the stuff that some of the doctors and she had to stand up and say, no, I'm not taking that. I'm not get, I'm not taking another prescription. Y'all got to do something different. No, then she started believing God, started researching. She's a researcher. She started researching stuff. It's like she started finding natural things that start clearing up stuff where her lungs were concerned, the chronic cough that she had stuff. I mean, I, listen, listen, look up milk thistle and begin to see. That's what I started learning. I said, what's this? What's a milk thistle? I said, okay. My first time hearing about this stuff was when she started researching things and coming back and saying, Mike, now some stuff I begin to research on my own at times or just come across things, but then her diligence in that area, because you got to see, that's the work you got to put in. See, sometimes we just, we try to, we get lazy as believers and we uh, make a declaration. Remember, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established, but then I'll begin to enlighten your path. I'll show you things. I'll reveal things to you. Sometimes just ask God, Lord, show me the natural alternative to this that will eliminate the situation. Some things you haven't received because you never asked for it. You never declared it. So that's why the answer never came because you never pursued the answer in that area. What is the answer? Man, this wisdom, I'm telling you, I, I know this wisdom from heaven that's flowing. This is the Holy Ghost flowing. This wisdom flowing. You got to capture it though. You got to receive it. And you got to say, you know what, doggone it. Don't you know you don't have to keep taking high blood pressure medication? You know you can bring your blood pressure down instantly with things. You can unclog arteries. What is this thing called cat claw? It's not the actual name of it, but it's like the uh, a more modern name for it. Cat claws. And part of it is it helps to unblock arteries. It's a natural thing. But if we now, some of these bypass surgeries, some of these heart attacks will not happen if we begin to start now producing. They're, they're, you, you've seen it on commercials. I'm going to shut down. You've seen it on commercials uh, about certain medications. And all of the doggone side effects are worse than what you're trying to treat. And it's like, what? My, yeah, I'll be healed of this headache, but my kidney will shut down. It's like, what? Are you serious? So there got to be something else, Lord. I got to do, no, we got to do this thing different. And I know this person say this good. This person say this ain't good. Then, you know, this person been saying for years and they researched when they said that this was fine, but then a further research said it's not fine. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, Lord, you know what? I know some of you, sometimes I done thought it myself. I might as well just be happy with what I'm eating. It's like all this other, like one thing ain't good. Next thing is good. Listen, allow, this is now too where you research, you do the things you know to do, proper diet, proper exercise. We understand these basic things. Pour life into you. I, man, I remember hearing my pastor say this years ago as he was um, believing God to be healed of cancer. The Holy Spirit told him, he says, how can a man die if he's constantly pouring life into him? Jesus said, the words I speak, they're spirit and life. Along with pouring life-giving substances in your body. To now say, he's going to reverse the aging process for some of you. Some of you, for those that hear this, you're going to look younger. Your skin is going to start looking better. I looked at a picture of myself. I was so like, oh God. From a few years ago, I didn't realize... I had lost, and I'm, on, I'm still on this journey of losing this weight and getting my body fit, but God is like really on me about intensifying. Over the past three years now, hold on, it was two, yeah. Two to three years I've lost 50 pounds. I didn't realize I was as heavy as I was. I didn't realize how bad my skin looked until I looked back at some things I'm like, oh, God, thank you for capturing me and the grace of God. While I was walking around work and I could feel like I was feeling bad, not realizing my blood sugar at that point 
And I knew I had to go to the hospital. And I called my wife. I said, I got to go. I got to go now. I just feel like just something is off. My blood sugar had spiked to over 500 and something. The doctors were trying to figure out why did not I go into a coma? Because of how high it was. And the minute my wife started changing my diet, doing things, and they, they gave me some insulin at that time just to bring it down, but not to stay on it. And just changing the diet brought the levels down. But watch this. What causes you to get healed, you need to keep doing to stay healed. Yeah, I was good for a second. Then I started introducing some of the same things I just eliminated out of my diet. Started eliminating. Watch this. Little by That's how Satan does. Yeah, I can't catch you in no scandal, but I'll kill you with a cookie. All I want to do is get you out the picture. I want you too tired to go out to do what God called you to do. And you will sit on the sofa and die with destiny. Because you ain't controlled your appetite. There's going to be a control and a discipline. This is why God is saying there's a great discipline that's coming now. To say to get to where I got to go, I got to do what I got to do. And sometimes the question would be, is this soda worth me drinking it to enjoy it for a moment? And then rob me of my health. And I'm trying to figure out why am I still so tired, not realizing how sodas affect the immune system. They do. It's stuff. How, how come my knees always hurt and inflammation in my body? Not realizing that sugar causes inflammation and sugar feeds cancer. I learned that several years ago from a coworker who had dealt with cancer. And she said that was one of the first things they taught her was that sugar, when you feed sugar, it feeds the cancerous cells in your body. It's like, whoa. It's time to change. Oh, you can't teach your old dog new tricks. Are you a dog? Or are you a person? Just admit it. I just don't want to change. That's what you're really saying. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I know I'm hitting. I'm hitting your food now. We all got to deal with it. Start changing. Do baked a couple of times a week versus fried all the time. Do something, some add greens in, eliminate this, add this. Just, just, just start changing and adjusting. There, there are nutrients and drinks that you can get to pour in stuff that you need in your body to produce life. God wants us well, folks. He wants us healed, healthy, and whole. He wants us to enjoy life. And God, listen, I'm talking about, oh, okay. Husbands and wives, you start changing stuff, your libido going to increase. You're going to desire. And he says, I want to change. I want to turn the desires of husbands and wives to one another so they can enjoy one another. And watch this. And sex will de-stress you. See, yeah, I know. some of y'all better be shouting about this one. Have intentional sex, husbands and wives. Husbands and wives. <laughs> Lord Jesus. It's sad you got to say it like that, but hey. It, it, no, I'm serious. It causes longevity. Let me help you with this. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be, I'm trying to be very skillful how I say it. <laughs> but consistent sex for you, for men, will even help your prostate. People don't realize that. See, this is stuff, when you start studying and looking at stuff, don't even realize, and you are de-stressed, it brings intimacy, it brings you closer together. I'm telling you, God wired this thing for a reason, folks. God wired this thing for a reason. He is setting us up for health, longevity. He said, with long life, I'm going to satisfy you. I come against premature deaths now in Jesus. I come against it in my own life. I come against it in my family's life. I come against it in my church family's life. Listen, with long life. All right, let me, let me. I'm just giving you ideas. I'm giving you things. As I was praying about this, it was like some of y'all need to start just doing simple things, stretching. You can take yoga, do Pilates, stretch. 
Some of y'all are like, what? Yoga? Ain't that um like some old Middle Eastern stuff? This I ain't say you got to go to some some false god or nothing. Meditate on scripture while you're stretching. See, sometimes we get so dumb deep with stuff. And listen, I used to be like, yoga. Uh, okay. Because all of you associated with was some Buddha temple, like some Buddha statue sitting somewhere in somebody's office while they stretch. Yeah, some of that stuff, but it's simple stretching out that you'll be amazed at just stretching your body, stretching your muscles. Even when you work out, stretching breaks them down and builds them back up. And you'll find strength picking up five pound weights. Some of you at home, if you don't have weights, get cans out of your, out of your um, cupboard and start doing curls to start just building up muscle strength, increasing your muscle capacity. I don't care if you 70, I don't care if you 80 or 90, you need to start doing something physical. I'm telling you, as I was sitting and thinking about this stuff, this was stuff that was coming to me to share with you. Start doing little things to build yourself up. Little things. You got to, you got, listen, you can pull it up on YouTube. You can sit in your chair at home and do little small crunches. Just start working on your core. And some of you are dealing with lower back pain because of a bad core. Your core is weak. If your core strengthens up, it'll eliminate the back pain in some cases. Because there's a strength that's being built up. God created this system and we need to understand this body and understand this system, understanding the circulatory system, the respiratory system, understanding how your mind fires and works. We got to get we got to get more educated, folks, and it's time to do it. It, it, it's, it's past time, past time. So I declare in the name of Jesus, healing, health, strength, and longevity. We declare that we live long and we live strong. And watch this, just because an attack, even as you start doing things right, if an attack ever happens and comes against your body, it doesn't necessarily mean you did something wrong. It just may be an attack that you have authority to overcome. We need to develop our faith, our walk with God to the point where we would be like John Lake did, where we can put a virus literally touches our hands and we see it die instantly. That's why I like speaking this thing. Every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, speak to your body parts. Speak to your pancreas. Speak to your heart. Speak to the heart valves. My heart beats with the rhythm of life and produces pure blood that flows throughout my body. My, yeah, thank you, Lord. My arteries are elastic and strong. Thank you, Father. That, that blood flows freely. Oxygen flows freely. In Jesus' name. Me, yeah. May you be healed and walk in healing all the days of your, of your life. You have the ability to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. These signs follow them that believe. Lay hands on your child. Speak life and healing. And become a proficient. Practice being proficient and speaking life, laying on the hands. You ain't got to have no long prayers for it. If you look at scripture, Jesus ain't pray long. Even the apostles didn't pray long. Seven, go have our number. Such as I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Boom. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy sins be forgiven thee. It's already done. Your sin, ooh, that's good. Your sins have already been forgiven. So your sins ain't going to hinder your healing. Jesus already took care of that. Uh -huh. You are already healed. For those that can't type it in, type it, I am healed. I am healthy and strong. Don't wait for something to go wrong before you start exercising faith here. Be proactive. Build up your immune system with your words, and with natural things that you know that will help you in advance. Be proactive. 
-hmm. and you'll feel strong and better. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory, praise, and honor for your word. We thank you, Father, for your strength. We thank you for life and that more abundantly. And we just declare and decree that we are the healed, protecting our health from sickness and disease. We thank you right now from unclogged, yeah, for unclogged arteries. We thank you right now, Father, for colons being cleansed right now. Yeah, we come against even the polyps that might be in people's bodies, that they are being dispensed and removed out of their bodies now, that they are not cancerous. We come against, yeah, cancerous cells now. We thank you for T cell counts being normal. We thank you, Father, that minds are firing properly, the electrons, protons, and neutrons. We thank you, Father, right now that our circulatory systems are blessed, healthy, and strong. We thank you, Father, right now that lungs are being healed. We come against asthma right now in Jesus' name. We come against it. Reject it. Don't live with it. Reject it. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Don't keep speaking. I have this. I like to say it like this. The doctors diagnosed me with this. Or this is what they're saying, but I don't receive it. I declare that I'm healed. Now, am I denying what's been attacking? No. I do the things that I need to do, but now say, okay, don't, don't be, God had to deal with me about this. And I, I think there's something I, I'll share it with you. It's like, don't, hear me when I say this, don't treat it lightly what's attacked. In other words, he was saying it to me so I wouldn't just be loose saying, oh, I can just be free to do da 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 He's like, no, take it seriously, but come against it. It's an enemy. It's designed to kill, steal, and to destroy. It's designed to rob you. So come against it in the name of Jesus and take authority over it. Be serious about it now. Life and strength to you now in Jesus name. In Jesus name, place your hands on your body and declare this say in Jesus name, I am healed from the inside out. My mind is healed from past memories and failures, from past mistakes. I forgive myself. I forgive others. Ooh and say, I forgive God. Mm, some of you be, oh Lord. Did God need your forgiveness? No, you needed to let it out your heart because some have been secretly harboring things against God and questioning him. And then you try to act like it's all good, but in your heart, in the secret places, Satan is trying to get you to distance yourself from him. I come against that in Jesus name. Healing, 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 healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I come against headaches. I come against imbalances. Yeah, hydration in your body. In Jesus' name. We come against inflammation. We come against chronic bronchitis in Jesus' name. We come against colon cancer. We take authority over you now in Jesus' name. We come against rectal dysfunctions in Jesus' name. We command you to be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Boils, we command you to fall off of their bodies now shrink, dissolved, and be removed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We amp up our faith, Father, to see signs, wonders, and miracles in these areas. Divine healing now. Divine healing like in an all-time high. We come against, yeah, we come against children in hospitals now, even dealing with leukemia all, and all forms of cancer. Bring strength to the parents now. Father, send somebody across their path to bring life into them, to speak life into them. Le 
Hole brasete de brosso do da No, no, shakanda na nebre. No, shebranda na will not die. Shebranda na nebre, na brosso con na nebre. Ya brasse de de brosse can na nebre city do do bro. Man de ge de bo fatan na men na na no no. No comasse que de de bre. Moner man de de brosso to no man de ge ne. No da chata can na de bre. Ya robo liri no comani que de si na no di do de bro do si le kumba. Oh, those old days. Oh, those old days. Oh, those old days. Whew. We take hold of kumba te sekete. Mi koma de se siti kamba seke. Hold me de ali gumba. Nekin do koba se terebo fre setanda. Whew. Whew, shekana. You foul spirit. You spirit of infirmity, you come off of their colon now. You come out of their body now. Who? Shababa disi de 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 breshi de de brosu to kon. That was the spirit of intercession. Shabra, now I take authority over there and I cast you, you foul spirit, to the pits of hell from where you came. Shabra ma le bros et le bros et de bros ref et de couche que de 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 bros. Who? Glory to God. Who? Jesus. He ba de ba de bo shukuma. Sete. Lilu grufa. Dale bo shetane. Shote sete kanda masipada. Shata da de de bre. Yeah, shabrana sata da de bre. Men are kushi da de de bre. Yeah, many men, many men and women will begin to pray like this. I'll begin to end this up and get into involved in situations. But I must, a man must need to pray. <laughs> will you allow me to use you to intercept and intervene on others' behalf? Glory to God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers you out of them all. Out of them all. Out of them all. Out of them all. Fear not what man can do to you, for I am with you, says the Lord. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the very ends of the earth. So just rest and trust me and believe me and all is well with thee. Shorobot, all shall be well with thee. All shall be well with thee as you believe and trust in me and rest. Take no account of a suffered wrong. Take no thought saying, how am I going to do this and how am I going to do that? He said, but just seek ye first the kingdom of God and my righteousness and these things will be added. So rest well, rest well. As you just get and dive into my plan and purpose, as you dive into my word, you begin to see things that you've never seen before. Things you've only read about, accounts you've only heard about, you'll begin to see. My glory manifested unto thee. Shobresh takani soto pasikini. Shoto yeah, we are the righteous, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are righteous army rising stronger and stronger. We're rising higher and higher, rise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Yeah, behold, gross darkness cover the earth and the people, but my glory shall be shine upon thee. My glory shall be seen upon thee. And I'm going to cause you to be raised up and kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Yeah, yeah. Shit, but I have not, oh, I've not forgotten. So don't you forget. Walk in the fullness of your purpose. I called you to do this. Now do it. Do it. Yes, Lord. Strong, strong anointing shall come upon me in these last days to get my job done in the earth. For I'm not through with you. You have not missed your window or season. This is your time. She bought it so yes oh my no shoot had the bush yeah 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 yes sir shall come by do for sapa de bush can she shall come stay focused 
For your adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But when he comes on knocking on your door, you will not answer. You will just begin to walk in my power and my peace. You will not allow him to come in. No more, 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 no more. Woo. For the greater one abides on the inside of thee. Shibrashite kusite. Lurubash ebo fre. Ruba sete kuma. Yeah, 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 yo, yo, yo. But there is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Death has no power, no victory over you. I know that the last enemy that shall be defeated is death. But he says, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Hey, hey. For to come from this life to the next <laughs> is graduation for the believer. Ooh. Shobrama. So no longer fear death, but live life in abundance to the full glory of God till it overflow. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, go for it. <laughs> Ooh, God said, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Soar like eagles. Ah, bresh de gana. Hosh de gana. Saya brasica. Fill our hearts, Lord, with greater compassion than ever before. Shannon in the bre. We come against the bitterness of rejection and failure and defeat. Nah. We are victorious in you. We are more than conquerors. We had the best of both worlds. And we'll never forget that. We are kings and priests, rulers in touch with you. And we live according to your kingdom in this earth. And your kingdom shall reign in all the earth. And we shall reign in this life as kings and priests unto our God. Who Strong kingdom advancement mandate. And it'll be, yeah, yeah. That's what you told me. Shabama, I seen I sensed it. Yeah, that mantle. Shabras the corner shall be elevated. Shabra by the bro freferat to bro ba should go brabasite or the bro. Ooh. That mantle of Miles Monroe is still there. It's gonna be advanced and it's gonna spread the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. And it's a who was a shift in thinking. Oh, Lord Jesus. Global glory. Global. 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 Oh, God, the glory. The glory. Who? The glory. Glory, Lord. Glory. Oh. <laughs> yeah. From a child I knew thee. Shabranos, my hand was upon thee. Now raise up others to go with thee. And you shall cover the earth in my glory. No, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. No, uh-uh, I reject that, Satan. I'll do it. I'll do it. Huh, I'm not alone. There are many others. Many others. <laughs> For an army is being raised up in global, yeah, deployment. Everywhere. Everywhere. Oh. Your brush it also don't rising up in my glory, power, and authority and dominion. Do your part. Be faithful to the call till I come. Short it, Bassi. Short it. Okay, 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 okay. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No more dwelling in the past. Move forward quickly, swiftly, swiftly. Time is at hand. 
swiftly, swiftly, swiftly. Yeah, Lord. Thank you. Go, Shakana and I take your voice into different places, in different rooms, in different areas. And there'll be great glory, great expansion. Many will come into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ through your voice, through this ministry. I'm getting ready to take you into different circles, different areas. Be ready. <laughs> don't, be, don't feel inadequate, for you are well equipped. Ooh, five. Yeah, did I know? Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, you said you'll give us a mouth and wisdom that none of our adversaries will be able to gain, say, nor resist. The wisdom of God, glory, the authority of the Lord. <sighs> yeah, even as they said to Jesus, he's one that spoke with authority. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you told us to think soberly, not to think too highly for the power that's going to flow. And we will take no glory for it. Be glory unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We cast down every crown, Lord, at your feet, crying, holy God, holy, holy, holy. Lord, forgive me. Oh, strong. Yeah, I got to walk in it. I walk in it. I walk in it. I walk in it. I walk in it, Lord. But it's so strong and overwhelming at times. Lord, your glory. I love you so much. Ah, thank you, Lord. I receive that. So, Ooh. Oh, glory. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this is not just for me, but this is for you as well. <laughs> much. To whom much is given, much is required. But you are well able to handle it. You're up for the job. You're up for the job. You're up for the job. Don't think of yourself as inadequate and strange. You are well equipped, says the Lord. Ah, some of you will go through intense training in this next year or two. Some of you have gone through trainings in times past and you're ready to be deployed. Now use your gift faithfully. Be faithful to the ministry. Be a wise steward over the mysteries of God. So many. Oh, Lord. Whew. The embassy, I keep seeing it like an embassy. Well, we train up here to go into the earth as ambassadors. Train in the righteousness of God. Train in your grace. Train in your power. Train in your abundance. Train in your glory. To be skillful, wise master builders. So, Father, we thank you. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Whew. Oh, Lord. Lord excuse me. Sometimes I just get in... Moments of just getting into the spirit. Mm. For the Lord will speak through you to you at times. As you begin to get into his presence and bask in his glory. And you'll begin to dig into the spirit and draw out the well of wisdom. The well of refreshing. The well of understanding, knowledge, and good understanding. And you'll begin to see things. For did I not say that the spirit of truth will show you things to come? He'll reveal things to you. Whatsoever I said, he'll, he'll remind you of those things. Who? The power and the glory. Mm, mm, mm. It's time for everybody to walk in. I want you to repeat this after me. Say walking, walking in the light. Say I'm walking in the light. I'm walking in the glory. The fullness of his glory shall be seen in my life. 
and I will obey. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, for those that may be tuning in, I don't know if you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. I give my life totally to you. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again, and I know it. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Now say this. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. You got power in you. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, he's a, he's about, he abides in you. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. That includes the Holy Spirit. You believe you receive them when we just prayed. He's come to dwell and abide in you and to live in you. And we'll teach you more and more how to cooperate with them. How to live in them. Live in the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. Praise God. If God is leading you to join this work, to make the commitment to connect and to join Spirit of Fire Fellowship as a partner and supporter of this work. <sighs> Obey the Spirit of God. If that's you, you can. there's information coming up on your screen where you can connect with us. We'll have somebody from our Connect team to get with you. Something is happening, folks. Get in on the ground floor now. Something is working. Something is at work. Hallelujah. Just obey God. Obey God. You can send an email to connectedspiritify.us or you can reach out to us on our social media platforms and we have somebody to get with you from our contact team, our connect team, to help you to obtain and maintain those things you come to receive. Praise God. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm drunk in the spirit right now. I'm, <laughs> at this time, we're gonna honor God in our giving Information is coming up on your screen. And God is leading you to sow and to tithe and to give. Do what he tells you to do. Many of you, you receiving your nourishment from this ministry. And God is, listen, Paul said it like this. If I've given unto you spiritual things, it's, it's nothing for me to receive the carnal things, the resources. There's an exchange that takes place. There's something about sowing into the word that you just heard. Don't miss this opportunity. The kingdom of God is the greatest investment you can ever make. Radical giving. This is going to be a time of radical giving. And it's going to be a time of radical increase. I believe that with everything in me. Praise God. There's some information as to how you can sow. There's a QR code you can scan. It'll take you to a secure page where you can sow via our website. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. Obey. Some of you is like, man, I'm hearing a number that I've never heard before. It's the largest. Obey. He's stretching you. Your present obedience will determine your future provision. If God is giving you a seed to sow, that means he has a harvest in mind for you already. So obey what he tells you to do. Praise God. Well, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. I encourage, I want to encourage everyone. Next week, we will be in person at the Arts Community Center here in Richmond, Virginia. Please, for those that are here, come out. We have a special guest minister that's going to be in the building. Uh, and I, need, I want y'all to show up and support. I believe he's going to have a word for the house. We're gonna, and I'll, we're going to have Apostle Stephen Banks. Um, he'll be coming and sowing. 
and sharing with us. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward. My wife and I will be celebrating our anniversary, our 24th anniversary. And so I'm entrusting you all into this man's hands. Listen, I believe in him. I thank God for him. He's been a confidant. Um, he's been there for me when I needed someone. And he's, he's an anointed vessel, an anointed vessel of God, humble spirit, but walking in power. <laughs> Y'all don't want to miss this. So I want those that are able to be in person, show up next week, 1.30. Service starts at 1.30. Corporate prayer starts at 1.15. And so for those that are serving and those that are able to serve, we would like for you to show up at 12.30 sharp. We will be having a meeting this week. I'll be sending out a message to everybody. We'll do a, a quick Zoom session just kind of going over some logistics, just just real brief, probably about 30 minutes or so of that. Um, but I just want you all just to let you know how much we love you. We appreciate you. Please keep us in your prayers at all times. We can go to a whole nother level of intercession. I just told my wife, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like God is like amp up intercession and prayer. It, it's something that's getting ready. He's trying to birth, but there's something we need to be praying about and going in, even into this new year, that we got to be very prayerful like never before. So we're going to attack some things, deal with some things. So intercessors, get ready. We're going to be meeting very shortly. I'll be sending out a notice to all of our intercessors and those that desire to be a part of the intercessory prayer team. You can send us a message um, to my wife or to myself. Um, you send it to my wife or my, yeah, you send it to my wife or myself for those that are able, that are part of the ministry that desire to be a part of that. All right. Love you guys. Appreciate you. I speak the blessing over you. May great favor rest upon you. Everywhere you go, may it precede you, may it follow you. May God shift people out of position and in the position that need to be. May things work together for your good. In Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Well, I love you guys. But we here at Spirit of Fire, changing the culture, igniting the passion, and living the dream. God bless you all. I'll see you next time. Peace.